So it's my great pleasure to welcome Anna Devich today to talk to us uh, for this Brownback seminar. Anna is uh, currently a visiting fellow at the University of Graz in the framework of the dimensions of Europeanization field of excellence. And she is also affiliated with the uh, KU uh, Leuven, the uh, Royal University of Leuven, um, where she's a researcher. And she is going to be talking to us today about the, um, uh, the, the gradual or continuous decline of Voivodinian autonomy, I guess. Um, but it uh, includes the words from the omnibus law to Ikabena multiculturalism, the stalling of the autonomy of Voivodina. And Ikabena is one of those wonderful words, which I'm very glad to see finally in a conference or workshop uh, or uh, presentation title. Um, as it is much underused. So um, without further ado, Anna, the floor is yours. Um, and then afterwards, uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Anna. Thank you, Florian, for this wonderful introduction. I hope everyone hears me well. And I again apologize a little bit for <clears throat> some cough uh, that uh, I uh, think is nothing serious, but just it interrupts me at times. Um, and uh, thank you for um, to everyone for coming uh, today for the presentation, which is uh, a sort of a restart of uh, what I have been uh, interested in nearly 20 years ago, right after the changes that took place in Serbia after the October 5th of 2000. And I decided to revisit, to some extent, revisit the time and then see how uh, some comparisons <clears throat> and some continuities or discontinuities can be discovered. I'm also grateful to, the, to hear, uh, I actually didn't know how Ikebena is pronounced, but now I know. <clears throat> so not to be mistaken, my propensities for horticulture are very modest, but now I learn how to pronounce it. So um, I start with um, some literary and visual reflections of Vojvodina as a region. Um, what was in the um, <clears throat> announcement of this presentation was um, a caricature by Dalibor Stupar Stups, who is a journalist and political caricaturist. And here he uh, shows the government and the assembly of the autonomous province of Vojvodina, which is an architectural landmark of Novi Sad, built in 1940 and popularly known since <clears throat> before the Second World War as Banovina. Um, so Stoops shows it as a sleeping beauty caged in a thick, thorny, enchanted forest, awaiting a prince of sorts to wake her up, presuming she's unable to wake up on her own. Uh, this is one possible interpretation of the caricature, as I discussed it with the author. Uh, undoubtedly, <clears throat> also according to the author, the aim of the caricature image was to present the stalling of the political autonomy of the province. In the realm of sociocultural stalling, I turn to Laszlo Wegel, Novi Sad writer, much more known in Germany and a number of other European countries where he received numerous awards, much more known in the past at least 30 years than in his home country, who reflects on Vojvodina and its multiculturality as an illusion, possibly making it a more dramatic reflection than that of a fairy tale sleeping beauty. He refers to the current politically conditioned, what he calls a decorative multiculturalism manifested in folklore spectacles, festivals of national minorities, theaters and the likes as showcasing or Ikebana multiculturalism. In contrast to the showcase model of multiculturalism, Weigel recollects the interaction between two traditions of the recent past, uh, a form of the multiculturalism from above, that is the nationalities, policies of the socialist era, and the period of the 90s in Serbia, which had eradicated it. The current stage, the showcasing, he characterizes as the wandering in between, a condition of polyethnicity and heterogeneity versus the homogenization from above, in which there is no impetus or agenda for social interaction and active coexistence, 
that would lead to a consensus about the culture of Vojvodina and its political status. Hence, the stalling. Weigel is not hopeful about the possible impact and prospect of the EU Europeanization of the autonomy issues, seeing the EU perspectives on multiculturalism and regionalism as sums of ethnicities, where majority nationalisms should be given an occasional slap on the hand, while the hierarchy of majority minority is kept in check with legal norms and social re relations re relate, reflecting cultural specificities are marginalized due to the lack of conceptualization of the link between civic forms of autonomy and trans-ethnic multiculturality. Departing from these two gloomy vignettes, my task today is to present a combination of the summary and a segment, in fact, of my project of the long uh, stalling of Voivodinian po political and cultural code. I shall first outline the stages of dealing with Voivodina's political and cultural autonomy in the post-2000 period, and in the second part, I shall present some perspectives of civil society critics of what has gone wrong with the agenda of autonomization, aiming to align them along some ideological divide or some ideological agenda. The issues stemming from this and also for the entire project are, can it be argued that the very concept of autonomy has been wasted through a series of concessions that the autonomist political actors in Vojvodina have made, buried under the general complaints about the threats to the special Vojvodinian historical identity? And even as such identitarian grievances have been lodged over the decades, it is clear that the multi-ethnic cultural specifics of the province and its minorities claims have also been seriously eroded and fragmented without an organized opposition. The resulting condition is, as Laszlo Wegel puts it, an Ikebana, a ritual status of multiculturality, multi-ethnicity and autonomy, at times subsumed under the EU notion of regionalism. The debates that are led by civic actors outside and despite the elite politics in Vojvodina and Serbia reflect a long string of the disciplining, camouflaging and marginalization of the lines of conflict and discontent in the province. A larger theoretical question um, that can be raised here is about liberal multiculturalism as a model prescribed to combat uh, virulent ethnic nationalisms. Is it applicable in an environment where a passage from one party system to a plural organization of quality democratization has been paralleled by violent conflicts organized along ethnic lines and geared to enforce ethnic divisions and homogenize the political and geographic space along ethnic lines? Is it a good model for construction of democratic polities in multi-ethnic spaces in this part of the post-socialist Europe? The most ethnically diverse constitutive region of the former socialist Yugoslavia and the most economically developed part of the rump Yugoslavia in the 90s, Vojvodina was the arena of the first violation of the constitutional autonomy of Serbia's two provinces, Kosovo being the second, uh, by Slobodan Milosevic's faction of the Serbian League of Communists in 1988. Since the first multi-party elections in 1990, the newly founded autonomous political parties started staging resistance to the Belgrade regime in the form of simultaneously seeking the first multi-party elect, in the form of simultaneously seeking the restoration of institutional support for linguistic and cultural diversities in the way that they existed <clears throat> or changing from the time <clears throat> of socialism and for its political and economic self-government. This programmatic stance was characteristic with some variations in priorities, in priorities for both multi-ethnic and minority nationalities political parties in Vojvodina. Most local political actors have identified the goals of democratization and stability 
with some form of the province's autonomy within Serbia. During the nationalist wars in the 90s, the three largest Vojvodina-based parties, the Reformist Democratic Party of Vojvodina, the League of Social Democrats of Vojvodina, and the People's Peasant Party, attracted a small following, quite a small following between 1990 and 1997. <clears throat> During this period, the Socialist Party of Serbia and Serb Radical Party could count on the average support of 50% of those who voted in Vojvodina. During this period, however, <clears throat> uh, the civil sector in Vojvodina mobilized as an autonomous political factor. The Independent Association of Vojvodinian Journalists and the Center for Regionalism have been continuously active since the 90s as harsh critics of Milosevic's regime at first and warmongering Serbian nationalism carrying along and developing their anti-war and anti-nationalist stance and demands for autonomy grounded in that, including the defense and promotion of civic values, bottom-up multiculturalism in the specific Vojodinian forms and defense of the minority rights. The Vojodinian civic sector was supported through foreign assistance in the 90s, primarily by the Open Society Fund, later also uh, joined by Freedom House and um, the main German <coughs> foundations. <coughs> Voivodinian actors believe that the international interest and assistance to local initiatives would continue beyond the goal of dethroning Milosevic's regime. Hopes then grew high, especially after the inauguration of the Pact for Stability in Southeastern Europe in 1999, a European Union initiative that supported regional projects ranging from infrastructure rebuilding to laws on minority rights. Then Montenegro as a breakaway state from the Ramp Yugoslavia was admitted to the pact program in a special capacity. Regretfully, much of the efforts vested then by Vojvodinian experts in preparing project proposals for joining the stability pact had to be forgotten after October 2000, as only individual states could become its partners. The first steps that the Vojvodinian autonomous parties took in the aftermath of the 2000 elections indicated readiness to stick to their joint proposal for the reinstatement of the Vojvodinian autonomy. The platform on the constitutional position of Vojvodina, which was passed in the Vojvodinian assembly in April 2001, and was submitted to the Serbian Assembly, which was a somewhat ironic move as the prerogatives of the Vojvodinian Assembly vis-a-vis -vis Serbia in the meantime were not reinstated even to the level they had been in 1989, proposed the following consecutive steps in reinstating the autonomy. Number one, the abolition of over 100 laws that were passed in the Serbian parliament between 1992 and 96, which destroyed even those remnants of the autonomy that were retained in the 1919 constitution of Serbia. And number two, pressuring political parties in the Serbian and federal parliaments to start rewriting the constitution of Federal Republic of Yugoslavia with the emphasis on asymmetric decentralization of rule. The enthusiasm that followed in the immediate aftermath of the overthrow of Milosevic's regime was realized also in surveys conducted by the NGO sector in cooperation with social scientists, seeking to link the expectations from the anticipated democratization to the changes in the status of the province. One such research titled Regional Identity and Local Responsibility, a study of the Vojvodinian public opinion was conducted then in seven Vojvodinian cities by a team of social scientists from the University of Novi Sad. The breakdown of answers to the question about the preferred political status of Vojvodina shows that with the exception of Vojvodinian Montenegrins, more than 50% of the respondents in each ethnic group wish to see reforms and improvement in Vojvodinian economic and cultural autonomy. In contrast, and here we're speaking about a survey that was conducted in 2001 uh, with 50% uh, of all respondents in each ethnic group who wanted to see reforms and improvement in the autonomy 
Now, <clears throat> since um, at least five years ago, when uh, these surveys were conducted, this percentage fell to 30%. Back then, the results of such surveys were an indication of the discrepancy between the slim support for the autonomous parties that existed, and this it was shown in the elections, and the state of discontent and attitudes towards autonomy among the general population. Such discrepancy would continue. The practices of autonomous parties are arguably responsible for the gradual decline of those initial positive attitudes to autonomy after 2000. Support for the autonomous parties have fallen from 9.5 to 8% of the vote in the province between 2004 and 2013. And even more dramatically, even more dramatically it fell since the coming to power of the Serbian Progress Party especially so when the League of Social Democrats of Vojvodina, an autonomous party, made a coalition with the Serbian Progress Party in 2016 on the municipal levels. <coughs> Excuse me. In 2002, the law on confirming per particular prerogatives of the autonomous province of Vojvodina, the so-called omnibus law, was adopted in the Serbian parliament. Since the Serbian constitution of 1990 was still in place and the new one was in the making, this law was conceived as an interim measure aimed at reinstating some of the prerogatives of the Vojvodinian autonomy, returning to the provincial assembly the rights to govern its health and pension funds, and reestablishing cultural and media institutions relevant for the province's multi ethnic um, culture and daily life. Further, the passing of the omnibus law coincided with the initiative for, changing, for changes in the Serbian Republican privatization law, which would allow for 50% of income from the sales of state enterprises in the territory of Vojvodina to be retained by the province, instead of 5%, which was the case before. <clears throat> Despite its temporary character, this omnibus law was in place for the subsequent seven years due to the protracted passage of the adoption of the new Serbian constitution in 2006. In the meantime, in 2003, the Vojvodinian Academy of Sciences and Arts was restarted. It was abolished in 1992. It existed since 1979, and it was abolished in 1992. It was de facto, de facto annexed by the Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts. Ten years later, the Constitutional Court of Serbia would overturn this decision for reinstating the Vojvodinian Academy. During this period, extensive debates were held in the Vojvodinian Parliament about the nature of its constitutive act. The debate on the draft basic law of the autonomous province was scheduled to take place in the beginning of 2003. This legal act was supposed to move, return a number of significant prerogatives from the Republic's level to the province while envisioning new institutions. Um, the province's president, the bicameral assembly with the Council of Citizens and the Council of National Communities, Vojvodinia National Bank and the province's government, not the council, Izvršnoveće, as it was previously called, as well as special judicial protection of um, the autonomy. This draft was to propose special affirmative measures for supporting smaller ethnic communities such as Roma, Jewish, and German. However, the debate on this law was postponed following the assassination of Zoran Džinjic, the Serbian prime minister, and then was never resumed, despite the fact that the law was supposed to have been instated following the new Serbian constitution in 2006. The Vojvodinian statute thus remained unchanged between 1991 and 2009. The new Serbian constitution, apart from disregarding the proposals for transferring significant <coughs> prerogatives of legislative, executive, and judicial powers to Vojvodina, also drew a significant asymmetry 
between Kosovo and Vojvodina. Kosovo was to have a substantive autonomy, while Vojvodina had the territorial one. Simultaneously, the 2006 constitution defined the state in ethnocentric, that is ethnic majority terms, as the state of Serb people and the rest, all of its citizens, making it confusing for citizens of Vojvodina who identify as Serbs to envision benefits coming from the enlarged autonomy of the province in which they live. The debates over the new, over the new statute of Vojvodina lasted then throughout 2007, when the League of Social Democrats in the Alliance of Vojvodina and Hungarians submitted the first draft. And 2008, when the Democratic Party, who then had the majority vote in the province, entered the deliberation. Major disputes and uproar among the right-wing parties, such as the Democratic Party of Serbia, Vojislav Poštunica, and the Serbian Radical Party of Vojislav Šešelj, arose from some formulations in the draft, such as those defining Vojvodina in descriptive terms as a constitutive part of the unique cultural, civilizational, economic, and geographic space of Central Europe. The Helsinki Committee for Human Rights, the uh, Serbian Helsinki Committee for Human Rights, called these debates and their media echoes the battle for Vojvodina and the assaults on the Vojvodinian statute. The silent political war over the statute, which included both the political and academic elites and the media, revealed the fundamental differences between the campaigners for centralism and monolithic power on the one hand, and promoters of a thorough decentralization of Serbia on the other. The catchwords of the former, apart from the inflated national pathos, were concerns for Serbia's integrity and sovereignty, while the latter emphasized the plight and role of open civil society and capable administration. The then victorious Democratic Party while it won its majority vote in Vojvodina promising decentralization reforms, quickly reneged on its assurances after 2008. The statute of Vojvodina version that was promulgated in 2009 was cleansed of all of its two autonomous stances allegedly threatening the Serbian sovereignty. The Helsinki Committee for Human Rights which organized and published proceedings from the debates on the statute, observed <clears throat> that in the society without a clear cut strategy for the country's development and in an atmosphere of overall disorientation, autonomists were also somewhat at loss when it came to efficient action against the deliberate delay to place the draft statute at parliamentary agenda. It turned out that the provincial authorities had no plan for counteracting this unnecessary delay. It was possible to use four options to appeal to the Constitutional Court of Serbia, calling for a provincial referendum, to include the statute issue in the process of European integration, and finally, even dissolve the provincial parliament. None of these were undertaken. Moreover, with the proclamation of the Kosovo independence, the year 2008 brought about another complicating factor and a warning against what could be perceived as another assault on Serbian sovereignty. While the autonomous parties were retreating, the conservative Democratic Party of Serbia launched the procedure for re-evaluating the Vojvodinian statute, claiming that the act was unconstitutional. For three years, the Serbian Constitutional Court did not respond to this submission. In 2012, the Serbian Progress Party, the breakaway from the militant Serbian Radical Party, won the elections. The Serbian Constitutional Court then announced that nearly two thirds of the statute's articles were unconstitutional. For example, that Novi Sad should not be called the capital city of Vojvodina, but the administrative center, and the seat of province's authorities, and that the province had no right to enter into inter-regional and cross-border forms of cooperation agreements. 
The initiative to open a Voivodinian bureau uh, or a bureau for Voivodinian affairs in Brussels was disputed as well, while this office did open, in fact, in 2011, and it continues to exist, although mainly in the form of organizing regional, regional culture days and promoting Voivodina as an economic and tourist destination. Meanwhile, the government of the autonomous province of Vojvodina had to change its name into the provincial government and a new seat of the so-called traditional symbols of the province, uh, sorry, a new set of the traditional, so-called traditional symbols of the province were introduced, which curiously now function along with the previous ones. The new traditional symbols are in fact the um, reminiscent of the heraldic models of the Principality of Serbia of the early 19th century. This is not a very good picture, and, um, I, but I couldn't find any better except from this presentation. And also um, everything is written in Cyrillic. On the left, we have the previous <coughs> symbols and on the right, as they are called now officially, the traditional flag of autonomous province and the, the traditional um, heraldic symbol of <coughs> Vojvodina. This move, which uh, some have dubbed the yogurt revolution number two, met with no reaction, neither in the Vojvodinian parliament nor internationally. Even the usually alert to undemocratic changes, Freedom House, did not make any notes about the recentralization moves in its 2013 to 2015 reports, uh, reports on Serbia. One of the last latest significant legislative moves made in the Vojvodinian parliament was the adoption of the declaration on the need to commence the changes of the Serbian constitution or preparing a new one. This declaration states the dysfunctionality of the current constitutive act, which makes it impossible to enter in substantive forms of interregional and cross-border cooperation, makes it impossible to access European Union funds, accession funds, and applying genuine principles of subsidiarity. Now, a few words, I don't know, um, how much time I have left because I don't have a clock in front of me. Um, but I presume I still have five minutes left, Florian? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so now some words about the Voivodinian nationality politics. Since the coming to power of the Serbian Progress Party, Srpska Napreda Stranka, it became uh, these nationality politics uh, became most visible in the victorious trajectory of the largest party of Vojvodinian Hungarians. The alliance of Vojvodinian Hungarians in the 2020 elections, um, which the large portion of the Serbian uh, political scene had boycotted, had boycotted. The alliance of Vojvodinian Hungarians achieved a spectacular result with nine MPs in the Serbian parliament, which was the last largest number since 1992. To put it in the context, the number, this number is larger than the sum of the MPs of the League of Social Democrats of Vojvodina and three other parliamentary, minor parliamentary parties. The Alliance of Vojvodina and Hungarians achieved an even greater result in the Vojvodinian and local elections Instead of having six, it reached 11 mandates in the Vojvodinian Assembly, that is 120 in total. To quote Chaba Presburger, the alliance of Vojvodinian Hungarians is now alone on the Vojvodinian Hungarian scene with nothing to shatter their voting base. But these fruits, as Presburger says, are lying under a cut tree withered and war worm eaten since in the meantime a large segment of the voters with a hungarian passport in their pockets emigrates to the west to the west and has no plans for returning home nor does it plan to vote 
As several analysts were predicting already since 2000, and again since 2012, the improvement of national minority rights and their cultural affirmation are increasingly taking the form of relegating minority issues to the care of their mother countries. In the case of Voivodinia and Hungarians, it is facilitated to a great extent by amicable neighborly relations and corresponding ideological orientations between the Hungarian Prime Minister Orban and his Serbian counterpart, okay, not real counterpart, president, but does it really matter, Alexander Vucic. During Orban's 2020 visit to Serbia, after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemics and immediately following the end of the emergency state in Serbia in relation to the pandemics, President Vucic declared that he was immensely grateful to the leader of the Alliance of Vojvodina and Hungarians, Ishton Pasto, for, as he put it, building bridges of friendship between the two countries. This gratitude undoubtedly stems also from the fact that the Alliance of Vojvodina and Hungarians has supported Vucic's candidacy in the pre for president 2017. One day following the 2020 elections in Serbia, Istvan Pastor met with Viktor Orban in Budapest. Um, delivering his gratitude for, again, the immense support that Orban and his government gave to us, the Vojvodinian Hungarians, in coming to our victory. For his part, Orban addressed the Hungarian voters in Vojvodina one week before the elections, speaking to the Subotica Pan on television. With my great respect, I ask Vojvodinian Hungarians not to forget to cast their vote for their Hungarian candidates and choose the best leaders, the best leaders who will be guarantors of making good partners in the current government. From the research to date, I could deduce, but it still remains to be tested, whether the ethnic sine cure trend, which commenced already in the 90s and intensified in the post-2000 period, continues and in what form. The post-2000 democratization gave a strong impetus, encouraging the competition between ethnic parties by opening a range of new posts in the reconstituted and governmental and parliamentary bodies of the province. The price for such developments was paid by the members of smaller ethnic groups, a large number of, um, a large number of ethnic also of ethnics of the majority of the largest minority nationality who live in non-ethnically homogeneous areas as the research conduct, conducted in the first half of uh, 2000s has already shown. New forms of ethnic minority nationalisms emerged via the competition among the aspirants to ethnic resource pools and the competition between minority nationalities elites. One ideological uh, debate I would like to um, draft here very briefly, how to consider the autonomy of Vojvodina as an ideological issue. <clears throat> So I uh, would like to present an analysis of two critical perspectives uh, of the plight of the ruining of the Voivodinian autonomy and showing some possibility or impossibility of moving forward with a new mobilizational agenda. Uh, one view that I will present here comes from an art historian and Voivodinian activist, Nevoša Milenković, who blames as he says, all political elites for the ruining of Vojvodinian autonomy, all those who claim to represent um, hitherto the Vojvodinian interest. Whether we're speaking about the post-October 5 administration and the coalition between the Democratic Party, the League of Social Democrats of Vojvodina and the Alliance of Vojvodinian Hungarians, which silently adopt, accepted to keep the status quo and the partial withdrawal of the provinces and their own prerogatives. But I also blame, says Milenko, which is the current provinces government, which is con consciously avoiding to use uh, the existing spheres of competence. 
Milenkovic, in his critique, sticks to the topic of culture and Voivodinian identity, criticizing also the national councils, which were introduced in 2010, national minority councils, which, as he states, brought us to the model of parallel existence of the peoples as the instrument of the minority accommodation. There is a good word in Serbian and Croatian and Bosnian, upodobljavanje. Not a good translation would be accommodation uh, of the needs custom made to fit the current ruling groups on the Republic's level, as well as the minority culture offices which made the traditions and cultural production of minority cultures even more isolated and marginalized than before, instead of affirming them." End of quote. On the other side of the theoretical and practical critique is Miroslav Samarjic, political scientist, also an activist, um, who launched an anti-capitalist critique of the shortcomings of the struggle for Voivodinian autonomy. Autonomy. According to Samarjic, economic and fiscal autonomy of the province, as, he call, as some call it, fiscal federalism, is meant to lead it on the path of neoliberal economic agenda. The creation of weak regional budgets would not, the creation of weak regional budgets would not lead subnational political units to command a stabilizing macroeconomic policy and enter large infrastructural projects. When subnational units themselves decide about tax levels, he argues, they would compete among themselves so to offer best conditions to private companies, slashing taxes and thereby diminishing public revenues, lowering the quality of social services for education, health provisions, etc. Thus, fiscal autonomy of Voivodina he argues, can benefit only foreign capital, much more than its citizens, and it will lead to massive social inequalities. He concludes that only a strong central state can guarantee social justice and equality, which in turn would stabilize both the society and the economy. While the first author, Milenkovic, pushes for an immediate dethroning of all Voivodinian political actors, arguing, pushing for a sort of illustration, Samaric starts from the premise that the concept of autonomy is alien to the left, which he wants to uh, represent. It is possible to argue the opposite, though, that the only genuine model of autonomy derives from the left. Its principles are public control over the economy and social assets. These are also the original ideas of the autonomists since the socialist era. That the citizens of Vojvodina should govern over natural resources of the province. It is correct that one needs a strong state apparatus to guarantee redistribution and social justice. But a strong state is not the same as centralized power. The latter, in fact, has not necessarily been among the principles of the left, since the state protects public assets, not by virtue of sitting in Belgrade or in Novi Sad, but through a distribution of tasks and responsibilities between the Republic, the province and local levels. Um, I just would like to say a few words um, in view of conclusions. Uh, nearly 20 years ago, <clears throat> I wrote my first assessment of the post Milosevic Vojvodina, observing what I called then the new Serbian democratic nationalism, which aimed to normalize the majority nationalism by endowing it with integrative and participatory features, reflecting two defensive political agendas. One had to do with the continuous denial of the participation of Serbian authorities in the wars of the 90s, opening a public denial, uh, refusing to open a public debate on war crimes. The other was the intent to co-opt members of the civic anti-nationalist NGO scene into the ranks of the victorious 2000 uh, parties. While the latter were chastised for their patriotism def deficiency, they were also simultaneously invited to establish an alliance and contribute to the democratic state of nationalism. 
In 2000 and immediately after, the shaky Serbian victorious coalition had braced itself for the path of reforms. The delayed post-communist integration in the dominant European context brought with it the reality of becoming a part of the European semi-periphery, where the much-awaited foreign investment will be for some years ahead used primarily for repayment and rescheduling of the debt rather than for rebuilding the country's economy and improving the living standards. In combination with the situation in Kosovo, which is an international protector, still referred to as part of the Serbian land, now independent Kosovo, this dependence of Serbia on international sponsorship came into a state of affinity with the new ethnicization of issues of democratic citizenship. Broadening political participation seemed to be the field into which Serbian elites did not dare to venture. I ask now, to what extent can all this still be observed? Finally, some theoretical notes going back to uh, the prescriptions for liberal multiculturalism and liberal nationalism as the basis of democratic transitions in East Central Europe. Can it be uh, a valid prescription? Is liberal democratic benevolent state, as it is defined by Will Kimlicka, the state that simultaneously dispenses individual and collective rights, is it a reality even in the majority of Western liberal states? It is at best an attempt to make a critical move away from the patterns of discrimination of the populations whose linguistic and other cultural characteristics had been used to shrink access to major resources. However, the doctrine of liberal multiculturalism, as the case of Oyodina shows, although I'm still to explore this further, may serve precisely the opposite goal, that is the transportation of state majority national disclosures to sub-state levels. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for this uh, presentation and uh, this kind of also very kind of contextualization of the case of Vojvodina. And I would like to uh, open the floor to uh, your questions and comments. I think we have a audience which surely will have quite a few questions. So I would open the floor. Who would like to go first? Just use your raise your hand function, or um, if you are, don't find it, you can also just turn on your camera and microphone. Yes, Anna. Hello, do you hear yes. me? Uh, yes, hi. Okay. Hey, hey. I don't know that you see me because I'm on my smartphone, but okay. Yeah, um, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. I really enjoy it. I have one question of half clarification, half additional information. I would be interested if you can um, explain further the, the changing support of local population for the autonomous parties in Vojvodina and more about the, let's say, sociological structure of the voters, from which classes they belong or how they position themselves. And yeah, the, the changes of support during, during the time in social classes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you for your question. And of course, this is a very difficult question because um, I should say that um, surveys that have been conducted uh, with much enthusiasm about the support uh, for Vojvodina autonomy actually ceased to be very frequent. Uh, much of these surveys were conducted prior to um, the change of the regime in 2000 and immediately afterwards. From what I have seen, these sociological surveys uh, were uh, conducted usually among 500 to 1,000 people and uh, their primary goal was to cover um, as many as possible uh, diverse um, settlements in, in Vojvodina. And since they were conducted by sociologists, uh, they took care about uh, covering all um, social strata. But I do see the problem here 
first in the fact that these surveys did not continue with the same frequency following mid 2000s and the second problem is that um, the, the construction of the questions in these surveys was such that it addressed mostly the, um, the questions of reforms and wishing the improvement uh, in terms of giving more autonomy to the region. Um, so the, the questions of the support for autonomous parties was not part of these surveys. We can judge uh, about the support for the parties from their electoral uh, results. And as I mentioned, uh, these results uh, for the non-ethnic uh, political parties, and now at the moment we can really speak only about two uh, such actors in Vojvodina, it has been in a continuous decline. So what I see here as a sociological problem is that there is a continuous discrepancy between the support for, uh, for improving the autonomy of the province in terms of a better control over the resources and the continuous decline in the support for autonomous parties. However, this decline must also affect the, the, the first, um, the, 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 the population support for the autonomy because there is a decline between 50% uh, in the beginning of 2000 who supported uh, the improvement, um, the re uh, reforms towards the autonomy and 30% or less that support these uh, reforms today. So there is definitely an interaction uh, between them, but again, these are two separate um, issues. I don't know if I explained this um, well. Thanks, Anna, I think that's clear. I think Frauke Sebas, do you want to just have the camera on? You don't have a question? Okay, so then uh, who else would like to ask a question? Yes, Jakob. Hello, uh, thank you for your presentation. I would actually have two questions. Uh, one of them would be uh, about uh, Voivodinian identity in itself. Were there any attempts during the last 30 years of creating like Voivodinian identity that would be overarching, for instance, like the national identity? So would there, would, would there be like any, so to say, like the trend uh, of uh, getting, for instance, various national communities together, for instance, Hungarians, Romanians, Serbs, and so on, and saying that we together construct one common uh, unite identity of Voivodinians, or maybe something like this appeared only among uh, Voivodinian Serbs. And the second question would be, you mentioned about like this alliance between Hungarians and Serbs around uh, this um, SNS uh, consent agreement. Uh, what, were there like any instances or do you have any information, for instance, how national parties of let's say Slovaks or Romanians would perceive this declining autonomy of Vojvodina uh, and like their perception of the centralization of the country. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Jakub. And I mean, I think this comes with a question I would have for you, Anna, is like to which degree actually were the Hungarian parties ever invested in the autonomy for Vojvodina? Because I remember there were many periods when they were more arguing for some kind of cultural autonomy for Hungarians and they were much less interested in Vojvodina as a political project of, of, of autonomy, and uh, is, has this become more pronounced, or, or how do you how do you assess that? Well, this is a, a very large project <laughs> uh, now, and uh, I'm still uh, uh, working on this. But uh, I also didn't have time to uh, be more specific about the. Uh, since I wanted to present the entire map in the last uh, 20 years, I think uh, perhaps uh, it was not very clear that the Vojvodinian identity is in fact um, claimed to be represented by the parties such as the League for, of Social Democrats of Vojvodina. In the, early two, in the early 90s, there were also two other parties, um, the Reformist Party and the, the 
uh, the peasant party, uh, people's peasant party. Uh, later on, there were uh, grouping such as the Vojvodina club, which still exists. There was the Vojvodina initiative. So there was um, a range and there is still a range of both uh, partisan and non-partisan actors that <clears throat> argue for a specific Vojvodinian identity to be part of the struggle for um, the autonomy. Now, the understanding of this cultural identity is, of course, very broad. I started from a literary uh, uh, vision of Laszlo Wegel, uh, but this literary vision is tied to a lot of activism uh, that I also represented in the end when I showed the, this uh, ideological divide between the culturalist and the so-called um, anti-capitalist left agenda. So yes, uh, uh, the autonomous parties in their, uh, among their constituencies, they are multi-ethnic and uh, they do not um, align themselves in, in principle, in what they say uh, with the Serbian nationalist agenda. Again, this is not corresponding necessarily with their uh, political behavior, with their actual um, alliances. As I mentioned in 2016, the League of Social Democrats uh, may enter the coalition with the Serb Progress Party on uh, local levels, on the municipal levels in, uh, in Novi Sad, uh, arguing that uh, entering in that coalition would not produce any significant political um, changes in their agenda. However, uh, when we see the decline in, in, in their votes, uh, one can safely argue that if they were de facto punished for um, joining this coalition. So the answer to the question whether there were um, political and cultural um, activities that would reflect uh, Pan trans ethnic Vojvodin identity. Yes, I didn't have time to to speak about a number of civic actors that have been active and still are active so, since the 90s. And one of the most prominent is the Independent Alliance of Vojvodinian journalists, uh, Nezavisno društvo uh, Novinara Vojvodine, who is uh, quite a beacon of various uh, not only uh, debates but also a lot of writing and research that they have conducted uh, since the 90s, also since the early 90s being um, uh, some of the leaders of anti-war and anti-nationalist movement doing still lots of surveys on um, coming to terms with the past, the war crimes of the Serbian uh, regime. The other uh, example would be uh, an NGO such as Center for Regionalism, with whom I also and Florian have cooperated in the past, who started uh, such important um, activities as the Igman Initiative, working already in the 90s on um, making efforts in producing a new form of cooperation among the post-Yugoslav uh, states. Um, so these initiatives are still very active but they do lack support and then hence they lack visibility in the public space. When one looks at how much they actually do, you get surprised. But then when people ask questions of like, oh, do, do such things even exist in Vojvode, then it is very clear that their visibility is um, quite minuscule. Uh, so I don't know if Florian, you uh, asked another question. Yeah, my question was about the commitment of the Hungarian, I mean, the, the, uh, ah, yes. the alliance uh, of Hungarian. Yes. Uh, Hung well, Hungarian. you know, there were, there were other Hungarian parties and there was a, a more balance between uh, the participation of um, the leaders of national communities in the early 90s. And this is also my personal memory uh, in the early 90s with um, the, 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 the anti-nationalist and anti-war Actively seen, actually included many people that were uh, coming from uh, uh, national community organizations and, and uh, nationalities parties, 
And uh, there was quite a sharing throughout the 90s of both, as you said, the idea of cultural autonomy of Vojvodina, but also being part of the common Vojvodinian culture space. This then uh, started disappearing, especially, which only looks like a paradox, um, in the aftermath of 2000. Uh, one also should say that throughout the 90s, uh, the, the, the alliance of Vojvodina and Hungarians towards the end of the 90s also uh, uh, was part of the coalition uh, government in, in the Serbian parliament, but I would say that there was quite a difference in comparison to the early to mid 90s. Uh, I could go on yeah. about some more recent examples, which I'm quite eager to unpack. Uh, and I have just consulted with some journalists in Vojvodina about how difficult it is actually to work on corruption lines. It seems that the journalists in Belgrade are much more skillful in, um, or perhaps there is a, a more significant corruption in, in, in Belgrade and, uh, and in Serbia proper. Uh, but it seems that there is still a lot of work that has to be done on, um, on the ways in which the uh, Voivodinian identity as, a, as an agenda is being capitalized upon. Um, and one example that is quite interesting is the ongoing uh, European um, cap, Novi Sad, the, Europe, the capital of the European culture. capital of culture in 2022. Uh, but the, the, actually, I discovered that the first signs of um, researching the corruption uh, on, on this uh, of this project uh, were done already in 2018 when the first um, funds of some quarter of a million euros were being distributed. Mm -hmm. um, and the program of this European um, capital of culture is quite interesting. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but it seems that um, there is going to be lots of festivals uh, which was the initial criticism of the European Commission vis-a-vis -vis, um, the, the, the draft of the agenda that um, culture is being identified with festivals, uh, which corresponds with the general orientation of, of, uh, of the ruling parties. But it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, they, uh, the program includes, I was quite shocked to read this, the so-called festival of reconciliation uh truly mind-boggling but uh, florian perhaps you're invited i haven't been invited to participate in this not festival. yet because it seems their preference is for non-local scholars <laughs> and we can guess why right i can see why well in fact uh, the state of Styria is closely cooperating with Vojvodina, so maybe there's some uh, some uh, channels there, but we'll see. Um, no, I mean, of course, you are not among the favorites. Right? I, I suspect that I might not yeah. be on the top 10 list of favorite uh, foreign scholars. Um, let's just see if there's any last question uh, for Anna at this point. But uh, if not, I think we're actually anyhow over time, so it's time to wrap up. Um, but yes, following the cultural capital is a good way to see maybe of how ideas of Europe, Vojvodina and uh, local Vodovisad well, identity meet or don't meet. Um, and so um, thanks, Anna, for your presentation. And I your... apologize that I took a lot of time, but um, the project itself has grown in the meantime since I'm going back to some um, ancient history. Not ancient, of course, but um, it takes time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everybody, for listening, for the questions and uh, joining us for this brown bag. All the best.